Hello and welcome to section 4, Designing and Building an App Volumes Environment. In this section we're going to first look at how you would approach an App Volumes project and then look at specifically how to design a production ready environment. So what we're we going to learn in this video. Before we go right ahead and start to install App Volumes, we're going to step back and discuss the key points you should consider before tackling a project. We're going to break these down into different project phases and then look at a couple of specific areas such as storage requirements and the integration with Horizon View. So let's start by outlining the three project phases before going on to each one in more detail. In phase one, we'll look at the project definition. That's where we we'll look at the business elements of the project and identify business and use cases. In phase two, we'll start to prove the technology and test the solution within your environment. And in phase three, we'll look at deployment and designing and deploying for production and taking the output and findings from the previous two phases to design your production solution. Now we've described the three project phases, we're now going to take a closer look at the first phase, the project definition phase. In this first phase, we're going to discuss how to define your app volumes project, looking mainly at identifying business drivers, building a business case, assessments, and defining the success criteria. So let's look at how to identify the business drivers. It may be an obvious point to make, but the key to identifying the business drivers is to really understand what you want to deploy and more importantly, why. By this we mean it is a strategic decision based on the need to transform your organisation with working new initiatives, or is there a more compelling event, such as the end of life of an operating system or an application? Or maybe it's just simply to reduce cost. Whatever the case, you need to get that nailed down and written up on day one so the project has meaning and direction, and more importantly a baseline to refer back to when it comes to review time to gauge whether or not the project has been successful. So some of the primary business drivers include things like cost reduction, centralised management of applications, scalability, so faster, easier deployment of applications, reducing user downtime, reducing application refresh and deployment cycles and update times, and operating system migrations. Now you should have an understanding of why the business is considering a project, we can go on to investigate further and start to build the specific business cases. Next we're going to look at building those business cases. Once we've defined the drivers behind an initiative or the compelling event that's kicked off the process and understood the high level objectives, the next stage is to start building the business case around these. By this we mean to go to the next level of detail and start to drill into the specific areas the solution needs to address. To do this, you need firstly to understand the business strategy and then identify the key stakeholders for the project. We can then start to define the high level requirements of each of the areas identified as drivers and also start to define user segmentation. For example, look at what different user types you have, how they work today and what they're going to need moving forward. At the end of the day, it will be the users that decide whether or not the project is a success. And this leads us into our next section, the assessment phase. Once you've built your business case and validated it against your strategy and identified that it was a requirement for a new way of delivering applications, the next stage is to run an assessment. So what do we mean by assessment? It comes down to several things that we're looking for. This includes examining your current application landscape by means of some form of application assessment so you can understand what applications are being delivered, to whom they're being delivered, and more importantly how they're being delivered. The assessment is designed to build up a picture of what the current environment actually looks like. Some of the key metrics we're looking for include which users will use which applications, application usage, are any applications being installed with a Windows installer, identify any application virtualization or packaging technologies already in use, unsuitable applications for layering, which client operating systems are being used, and how delivery methods are being used, so RDSH, ZenApp, VDI or physical PCs, etc. If you've deployed a VDI solution already, you never most of this data, but even so, it may have been a while ago, so it's worth rerunning the assessment so you have bang up to date data, especially around the applications in your environment. By gathering this assessment data, we are creating a baseline of the environment. Then, as we move into defining the success criteria and proving the technology, we can refer back to the baseline as our reference point and use it to demonstrate how we have improved the current working environment and delivered on the business case and the strategy. There are a number of tools that we can use in the assessment phase to gather the information required and provide you with the physical data, tools such as Liquidware Lab's Stratosphere. But don't forget to actually talk to the end users as well, so you're armed with the hard and fast facts from an assessment as well as those from a user's perspective. 
As part of the assessment, there are also some key things that you need to understand around your existing application landscape and packaging strategy. This information will help you plan the number of applications per app stack. Bearing in mind too, many applications could increase the risk of conflicts between different applications and result in more complex management. Finally, we have the success criteria. The key objective in defining the success criteria is to document what a good solution should look like for the project to succeed and become production ready. We need to clearly define the elements that need to function correctly in order to move from proof of concept to proof of technology and then to pilot phase before finally deploying into production. You need to fully document what these elements are and get the end users or other project stakeholders to sign up to them. It's almost like creating a statement of work with a clearly defined list of tasks. Another important factor is to ensure that during this phase of the project, the criteria doesn't start to grow beyond the original scope. By that we mean other additional elements should not get added to the success criteria, or at least not without discussing it first. It may well transpire that something key was missed. However, if you've conducted your assessment thoroughly, this shouldn't happen. Another thing that works well at this stage is to involve the end users, setting up a steering committee or advisory panel by selecting people from different departments to act as sponsors within their area of the business. Actively involve them in the application testing phases, but get them on board early as well to get their input in shaping the overall solution. Too many projects fail when an end user tries something that doesn't work. However, the thing that they tried is not actually a relevant use case or something that is used by the business as a critical line of business application and therefore shouldn't derail the project. If we have a set of success criteria defined up front that the end users have signed up to, anything outside that criteria should not be in scope. If it's not defined in the document, then it should be disregarded as not being part of what success should look like. Now that we have our assessment data and a scope of what we're setting out to achieve, in the next steps we're going to look at the options for proving the solution is fit for purpose and delivers the benefits required.